The flow arts world is toxic. I've seen these words typed more times than I can count in the past few years on a variety of different message boards on the internet. Is the community toxic? If so, why? And is there anything that can be done to fix it? Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, we are talking about the wider flow arts community. Again. Before we dive in, I just want to give a shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow DNA, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. And a special thanks to the first non-business friend of the channel, Johnny Howard. Thanks so much for your support, Johnny. Yeah, so apparently my days of talking about difficult and controversial topics in the community are coming to a middle. So I'm going to start this off by saying that I believe that there are really two camps that are assigning this label to the community, and they're doing so for very, very different reasons. And I can understand why each camp believes this, and that it also should be said that people can have reasons for believing the community is toxic that pull from both ends of this spectrum. But I'm probably getting a little ahead of myself here. When I say the community is toxic, what exactly do I mean by that? Toxic is a term that's long been used for describing dysfunctional relationships, whether they be intimate, friend, or work relationships, and it's been extended to describe groups of people as well. In that regard, the definition I found of toxic that I think best fits this context is a relationship characterized by behaviors on the part of the toxic partner that are emotionally and not infrequently physically damaging to their partner. And in a more general sense, we could look to see the word toxic applied to communities in such a way that we think of groups of people who come together over a common interest or activity as either incentivizing or failing to contain behaviors and actions that are emotionally or physically damaging to the people in them. So what are some of these behaviors? Well, this is where I think it comes down to there being two very distinct camps that see the community as toxic. Those that don't want change and those that do. Why would somebody want either side of this? Let's take a deeper look. I believe people who fit into the first camp are people that come to the flow arts looking for identity and stability. To them, flow arts and poise spinning represent a community that offers them a place that is safe, supportive, and nurturing. And very frequently, things that are seen as unsafe, unsupportive, and unnurturing are things like conflict, discord, or criticism. Frequently, I see this manifest in the form of conflict aversion in various forms, where speaking about and addressing conflicts is itself seen as destabilizing or antagonistic. It can also take the form of reacting negatively to any negative feedback, believing that the only feedback that a person should be given is affirmation or positive reinforcement. I'm painting with a very broad brush here, and that's partially by design. I believe that there are many cases in which people engage in negative feedback from a bad faith position, where doing so gives them a feeling of power by tearing down others or what they represent. But I also believe that conflict avoidance isn't sustainable and can be one way in which toxic positivity can manifest, which that's a whole topic for another video. And perhaps the biggest ways in which I see this manifest are people who decry the emergence of what they refer to as cancel culture, which in many ways can be seen as the ultimate threat to a community's stability. Now, me personally, I don't believe that cancel culture is actually a thing as it's been positioned, and if it is, then it's been most frequently used by the very people who are complaining about it now. I think that accountability is incredibly important, especially among people that hold a great deal of power and influence in a community. And it's that very thing that makes cancel culture seem like such a threat. If you've built your identity around the stability of your community, when those who have the most power and influence in it have some of that power and influence stripped away as a result of harmful behavior, it creates power vacuums or even leads to the collapse of traditional social hierarchies. Cancellation is a direct threat to that stability, and there's no way around that. But if the stability you seek is built upon harms committed upon people in the community, I might ask how stable it is in the first place. So are there people that engage in bad faith criticism of others in the flow arts community? Yes, absolutely. And frankly, are there people that engage in public shaming to make themselves feel powerful rather than elevating or listening to the voices they claim to be fighting on behalf of? Again, yes. But does that conflict make a community unhealthy? No, I don't believe that it does. 
I think that conflict is frequently necessary to address competing needs, arrive at a compromise, and most of all, to make sure that all voices in said community are represented. Okay, so what about the other side of the spectrum? So this is the side wherein people seek to create change in the flow arts community due to longstanding marginalization. These are women, neurodiverse, LGBTQ+, and BIPOC flow artists who, especially in the past few years, have grown increasingly vocal about the ways in which the community has failed to support or recognize the contributions of people who fit anywhere outside the sphere of cisgendered, neurotypical, and heterosexual white men. And if you are waiting for me to give the nuanced pros and cons of this side of the spectrum, then I am sorry to disappoint you, because where I'm sitting right now, I absolutely agree that the flow arts community has done a terrible job of supporting these people, and is doing an even more terrible job of acknowledging the grievances that they're voicing now. Racism and sexism have been long-standing problems in the flow arts community that many of us have tried to convince ourselves were things we didn't have a problem with. After all, we were different, enlightened. Our countercultural values by default stripped us of both engagement in or accountability for a variety of harmful behaviors, right? I can't count the number of times I've seen people come forward to talk about abuse, sexual assaults, or microaggressions within the community and be gaslit or ignored when they do so. A lot of the aspects of fragility, whether it be toxic masculinity or white fragility, have been carried from the wider culture into the flow arts culture. And yet, we are having these conversations, which in itself is an improvement. These problems are at least being identified, and that is the first step towards resolution. But here's where things get interesting, because these two different poles of the community are directly in conflict with each other. See, talking about harms in the community in itself will rattle the conflict-averse side of the spectrum. These conversations are a threat to the stability of the community, and therefore the bedrock upon which their identity is built. By the same token, the status quo has been harmful to countless individuals, and having their concerns brushed off or ignored deepens or continues the harms that they experience. So, is the flow arts community toxic? Well, I think I've identified several ways in which it does cause emotional and physical harms to those who are a part of it. But, at the same time, the exact ways in which some perceive harm is the way others perceive exactly the opposite. There's absolutely a paradox here, so I'm going to go ahead and do something a little weird here and punt on this question. I don't think the real question is whether the community is toxic. I think the real question is how we identify harms within it. And this is where it really steps into editorial territory. No BS. I think a community's health is measured directly by how it handles the harms done to its most vulnerable members. I think a community is stronger when everyone in it considers it their job to work to make those vulnerable members as comfortable as possible. And a part of this is identifying the ways in which we contribute to harms against them and being willing to engage with and grow from having those harms identified. I literally cannot count the number of times I've seen flow artists apologize for accidentally bumping into other artists at a spin jam and apologize. They almost certainly didn't mean to bump into the other person, but it's at least considered polite to acknowledge that the action may have caused the other person distress. And yet, when we bump into each other emotionally, there's something completely different that happens, wherein people will double down, become defensive, or insist that their intention is the only thing that should matter. That it's considered polite to apologize when you physically bump into someone, but many take offense at being asked to apologize when they emotionally bump into someone, is a contradiction that is baffling once you become aware of it. I think we all need to learn to become better at apologizing and ask ourselves, why we're so resistant to doing so in some cases, but not in others. Let's be real. We all have a lot of stuff to unpack here. And on the flip side, I think if one's sense of calm and tranquility is based upon eliminating all forms of conflict from their environment, then they've got some work to do too. They will literally find themselves jumping from community to community for their entire lives because there will never be any group of human beings that can be completely conflict-free. I do want to say real quick that I, I do get it. This is a topic for another time, but a lot of us come from environments where conflict was really traumatic. There are lots of us that associate conflict and arguments with some incredibly difficult situations. And I'm here to tell you that while we may not be responsible for the traumas that have led to this form of conflict aversion, we're absolutely responsible for what we do with those scars. We cannot ask others to sit in discomfort in order to preserve it for ourselves. Is the flow arts community toxic? 
Well, I mean, yes, but then again, so is every community that finds itself in these sorts of conflicts, which is to say, so is every community. And if every community has to engage in these sorts of conflicts, I think that kind of makes the flow rights community normal instead of an outlier. So what's the solution? Well, honestly, I think it's that we all have a whole lot of work ahead of us. But I think it's work that is important and worth doing. But what do you think? Is the flow arts community toxic? And why? Do you identify with one or the other end of the spectrum that I've identified here? How do you think we move forward from here? Leave me a comment and let's see what the work looks like. Did you get anything out of this video? Please keep the conversation going by leaving me a like, comment, sharing, and subscribing to help other people find this video and to help my channel grow. Do you like POI content? Do you like tutorials, flow sessions, and vlogs on flow arts culture? Consider signing up to support my work. I want to bring flow arts to the wider world and help people connect with their brains and their bodies through prop spinning. So help me do it. Head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. You can do that either by clicking on the card that just popped up on YouTube or by using the link down in the description. Not only will you be supporting this mission, but you'll also be able to get early access to all of my content, a vote in what content I produce in the future, and a host of other awesome rewards such as getting a special weekly poi lesson delivered to your inbox that is only available to my supporters. Go give that a look and please consider supporting this channel. Thank you in advance. And on the topic of thank yous, I just want to throw out a huge one because this video would not be possible without the kind support of these wonderful people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon, and they, along with the people listed down in the description, help to make this video and all the videos on my channel possible. I know, I switched around the order of my stinger here. I was just curious to see how it would flow. Pun intended. Thanks so much for watching this video and being willing to engage in these very difficult topics. I believe they're important to identify and address in our community. I've definitely felt moments when I believed that there were forces in the community stacked up against me or that didn't believe that the stuff had hurt me was a problem. And I'd imagine that a lot of you are in a similar boat. So let's talk about it. In the meantime, I've left a link to a playlist of other vlogs that I've done down in the description as well as up on screen if you're watching on YouTube. Be sure to get outside and flow today, and I'll see you with a new video on Wednesday. Peace.